from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Candidates, let's begin this round by talking about Iran. Governor Huckabee, did the American commander in the Strait of Hormuz the other day make the right decision by responding passively when approached aggressively by Iranian fast boats believed to be from the Revolutionary Guards? Uh, he also received, as you know, a warning that said that the American ships might be about to blow up. Uh, did, he res did he make the correct call, sir? I'm going to trust that the president, with the information that he had and that those commanders had, made the right decision. I think we need to make it very clear, not just to the Iranians, but to anybody, that if you if think you're going to engage the United States military, be prepared not simply to have a battle. Be prepared first to put your sights on the American vessel, and then be prepared that the next thing you see will be the gates of hell, for that is exactly what you will see after that. Congressman Paul, what if this happens again? I would uh, certainly urge a lot more caution than I'm hearing here tonight. It reminds me of what happened uh, in the Gulf of Tonkin. We went to a war there, then later on found out there was a lot of false information. So here we have, put it in, let's put it in perspective, we have five small speedboats attacking U.S. Navy with a destroyer. They could take care of those speedboats in about five seconds. And here we're ready to start World War III over this. And now, guess what? Today, today, the Navy, Navy commander of the Fifth Fleet was on ABC and announced that, you know, that voice might not have come from those vessels. So what does that mean? Was there a rush to judgment on this, ready to go to war? And you know there are people in this administration and in Washington, D.C. that are looking for the chance. They were so disappointed with the uh, national uh, estimate on, on intelligence, and uh, they were disappointed that there was no, there's no attempt to build weapons in Iran since, uh, since 2003. Congressman. So what, uh, I, I just don't see I, this I, rush to judgment. Well, well, wait a minute. All of these people I've asked this question to so far have said they, report, they supported the decision to be passive. I think one more step, you know, and they would have been introduced to those virgins that they're uh, looking forward to seeing. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, what do you think? Well, this really should give us some uh, sort of indication that the NIE should not be interpreted as, you know, the, the National Intelligence Estimate, where uh, it was suggested that possibly Iran had uh, stopped their nuclear program in 2003, high confidence that they stopped it in 2003, only moderate confidence that they haven't continued it. I think an incident like this reminds us that we shouldn't be lulled into some false sense of confidence about Iran. I agree with Rudy. Maybe the Iranians think we're weaker because of the NIA. Maybe, maybe the Iranians aren't really s slowing their export of uh, most lethal explosive devices into Iraq. Every one of these of your fellow candidates has said they supported the commander's decision to respond passively. I just wonder what you're <laughs> reacting to. I don't know. Oh, well, I, didn't, I, I didn't hear that. Of course, we want caution, but I'm worrying about the policy of why we're looking for a justification. Now there are no weapons. Actually, people are looking around for an excuse to bomb Iran. I mean, we're already, with our CIA being involved in trying to overthrow that government, and we don't need another war. Cong Congressman Paul, uh, yet another question about electability. Do you have any, sir? There's always the question as to whether or not you are, in fact, viable. Your differences with the Republicans on the, uh, the, with the rest of the Republicans on this stage has raised questions about whether or not you can actually win the general, the Republican nomination, sir. Well, we've only had two little primaries so far, so it's pretty premature to decide which one is going to be the candidate. But, you know, when, when you think about it, if you measured everything I've ever said, every t vote I've ever taken, against the Constitution, you know, I'm a strict constitutionalist. Are you suggesting the Republicans should write me off because I'm a strict constitutionalist? I'm the most conservative member here. I have voted, you know, against more spending and wasting government than anybody else. So you're suggesting that I'm not electable and the Republicans don't want me? 
because I'm a strict fiscal conservative, because I believe in civil liberties? Why should we not be, be defending civil liberties? And why should we not be de talking about foreign policy that used to be the part of the Republican Party? Mr. Republican Robert Taft didn't even want us to be in NATO. And you're saying now that we have to continue to borrow money from China to finance this empire that we can't afford? I, let me see if I get this right. We, we need to borrow $10 billion from China, and then we give it to Musharraf, who's a military dictator who overthrew an elected government, and then we go to war, we lose all these lives promoting democracy in Iraq. I mean, what's going on here?